Welcome to Computer Science 320 2014 Winter 2's Midterm 1 Practice Problems. So we've just put together a strategy to maximize the number of cache misses in the optimal caching problem. So we're doing pessimal caching. And our strategy, roughly speaking, is to evict the next cached item that will be used. And we need to prove that our strategy is correct. That is, that it gets the pessimal result. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to compare against an optimal strategy. So let's imagine that our strategy emits some sequence of evictions over some sequence of data items, and it's the same as some optimal strategy up to some point. So here's our greedy strategy, and here's the optimal strategy, and they're the same up to this point. Okay, so then we have some request for a data item uh, Z come in. Uh, both of them get Z. We evict X when Z comes in, and the optimal solution evicts something else. It evicts Y. So optimal, we know, must have... A, let me be as clear as I can. <laughs> We're going to call this pessimal. We know pessimal has as many cache misses as possible, so greedy's cache misses have to be less than or equal to pessimal's. What we're going to try and prove is that greedy's cache misses are also greater than or equal to pessimal's. That is, we can, we can move pessimal around, we can change it around without reducing its number of cache misses anywhere that it differs from greedy and make it a little more similar to greedy. And because there's a finite number of these changes that we can make before it's the same as greedy, that will be the heart of an induction proof that in fact greedy is a pessimal strategy. So uh, when we have a choice over what to evict, this has to be not a dummy item. We don't care about the dummy items, it doesn't matter what order they go in. So Z's not a dummy item uh, that we are, uh, sorry, X and Y are not dummy items that we're getting rid of. Uh, we at this point have to choose a real item. We know that greedy chooses the next cached item that will be used. So if we if we look down the sequence here, at some point X is used, and then maybe Y is used later on. Uh, we don't know. Okay, so they're both going through the same data item sequence, but X is the next thing that's going to be accessed that's actually in the cache. Now, there can be other stuff in between here. There can be other things that are not in the cache that occur in between, but Y cannot appear in this area here because it's in the cache. Otherwise, it couldn't be evicted. Okay, so what's going to happen? We're going to access things that are not in the cache, and we're going to evict stuff as we do it in this dot 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 region. We're never going to access Y. We are eventually going to access X. And at that point, we know Greedy's going to get a cache miss, and this one may or may not get a cache miss. In the meantime, all of this stuff is not in the cache right now, so one thing that we know for sure is we're going to get cache misses on uh, at least some of this. We may have some item that appears many times in here, so maybe this is Z, W, 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 and over and over again we get W, so we get a bunch of cache hits. We'll see what happens with that. So what we'd like to do to this, this pessimal solution now is we'd like to take it and change its eviction of y to an eviction of x. And that'll make it one step closer to greedy. But the question is, what impact will that have on its overall number of cache misses? Okay, so what we need to worry about is accesses of x, accesses of y, evictions of x, and evictions of y. If we're evicting something else, well, that doesn't really have an impact at this point. If we're accessing something else, that doesn't really have an impact either on this, this slot that we've sort of set aside to x and y. Let's make a diagram of that. We've got accesses and evictions and x and y. So which of those can happen in this range in here? Well, we can't have an access to x in that range because greedy evicts the first item 
that's going to be used that's in the cache. So this has got to be the first time X appears right here. This is the one that Greedy found that made it decide to evict X. So we are not going to have an access to X in this region here. Are we going to have an access to Y? Well, no, we're not going to have an access to Y because if, if Y is also not in the cache, which it must not be because the pessimal solution evicted it, then if it appeared in here, Greedy would have evicted that instead. So we're not going to have an access to Y either. Is the pessimal solution going to evict X? Well, yeah, it might actually evict X in that region. Is it going to evict Y? No, it can't evict Y. The reason it can't evict Y is because it's already evicted Y, and it's not going to access Y in here anywhere, which means Y can't get back into the cache, so it's not allowed to evict it. So we actually only really need to worry about evictions of X. So what happens if the pessimal strategy does evict X in here at some point? So we've got some access, it causes an eviction, and it's an eviction of X. Well, we've changed this to X, so X is already out of the cache. So instead, let's evict Y. So in this case, evict y. Now what if none of these happen? What if there's no access to x or y, which we know there can't be? There's no eviction of y, which we also know there can't be. But there's also no eviction of x. Well then, we're going to get all the way to this point, and we'll have an access of x. That would have been a cache hit down here in the pessimal strategy before. We're going to turn it into a cache miss at this point, but maybe we're going to mess something up later on down the line by doing that. Well, that's not a problem. X is going to be brought back into the cache at this point. So when it's brought back in, we'll evict Y. Okay, so if none of these happens, evict y at access to x. At that point, one of two things happens. Either we've restored the state of the pessimal strategy to where it was before in terms of what its cache looks like. If it evicted X at some point during here, then we change that into an eviction of Y, we change this into an eviction of X, we end up with the same number of evictions and the same set of stuff in the cache at this point. On the other hand, if there was no eviction of X in this range, then we have evicted Y when we get down here. We got Y out of the cache and X, which used to be a cache hit, is now a cache miss. We've actually increased the number of cache misses without changing what's in the cache. So either we've increased the number of cache misses on Pessimal, which is supposed to have the maximum number of cache misses, so that's not possible, or we've kept it the same and we've made it look a little more similar to Greedy. Either way, this shows that we can step-by-step step take Pessimal and turn it into Greedy. So let's try and make this a bit more formal since this is all sketchy, sketchy diagrams. So what we're going to say is uh, consider the first data item on which greedy and a pessimal solution differ in evicting a non-dummy item. The dummy items are not interesting. Okay. Without loss of generality, uh, greedy evicts x, pessimal evicts y. x and y must both be in the cache. Or we're breaking the rules. x must be the next cached item 
in the data stream. Or Greedy wouldn't have chosen it. So now we can add these facts that we learned from this table up above. Between this eviction and the access to X, that is that very next access, there can be no accesses to X or Y, else greedy would choose based on those. Okay, good. So we've taken care of these two entries in our table. We need to take care of this one. Let's see, so one, there can be no data access is two. Pessimal cannot evict y because it can only be brought back in on an access to y. Okay, so that takes care of this square. So we will change pessimal to evict x like greedy. So that eviction decision is now going to go to x. If between that eviction and the access to x, pessimal evicted y, that's our last box in our diagram, then change that eviction to x and pessimal has the same state at the access to x as it had and the same number of evictions. Otherwise, evict y at the access to x and it has the same state but more evictions. And that's a contradiction. So that can't actually happen. So that means we've made pessimal one step more similar to greedy at the same number of evictions and a finite number of such changes will make it equal to the greedy solution. And that's it. All right, next we will move on to problem eight.